you're back in the city at Porrid Park and look at all this stuff at your feet sand and silt and horrible stuff like that. Now Tom Wilson here from the University of Canterbury knows all about liquefaction. You found out about that yesterday. But Tom, what impacts does it have on things like roads and sports fields? I'll talk about the liquefaction stuff for a start. The key side with, uh, with liquefaction is that we have silty sandy material which is really uniform in grain size and you can see that from these scanning electron microscope images of the sediment that we've been collecting from around the city right. but what you can see is there's lots of pore spaces in there for the water to be and so when you when you give it a shake it's uh, going to start liquefying okay so it gets completely saturated can we model that with the silt that we've got here sure thing So this is the uh, this is the sediment that's underneath Christchurch. It's uh, as you can see at the moment, it's looking okay. It looks like you're uh, it's a pretty solid sort of state, and you 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 know you might want to be okay with building on top of it. But as soon as we introduce some earthquake energy through here and start agitating it, those little particles are wanting to start to settle out, and all the water that's in there wants to move. So as soon as we start doing that, you can see it collapsing, oh. and it just loses all its rigidity and any bearing capacity. The engineering term. Couldn't build on that. Oh. So you can see that it's not very good stuff to build on. So here in Avonside and other eastern suburbs there was a lot of liquefaction. Now it's not just the silt that's come up, it's mainly water. You've got a great photo there, can you show us that? Absolutely. So the thing to, to keep remembering about liquefaction is that it's actually the water which is trying to get out of those liquefiable layers. So here's a really nice example of what the Christchurch soils kind of look like. Is that you have a nice dense crust of soil and other material on the, on the top and then underneath there, there's these liquefiable layers. When the earthquake occurs and they shake and they agitate, the particles want to settle out but the water pressure goes up really really high. And so the water is actually trying to get out of these vents. And so it's spurting water out and that's why we had all that flooding across the Christchurch urban area. But with it, as that water's coming, it's transporting this liquefaction or this, this silt uh, material which has been ejected at the surface. Right. Now the challenge with that is that uh, where you have material being ejected at the surface and settling um, underneath is that you have the settling of the land. That's really bad for our structures such as buildings, houses, etc, uh, bridges, whatever, um, and any pipes that are that are include or that are um, be, that have been constructed through the liquefiable layers. So that differential settlement is going to cause them to break, buildings to wobble, and all sorts of crazy things to happen. Yeah, it's not good if your land's going up and down and up and down. Things don't survive too well that are solid on top of that. Now, on the roads, we've had huge bumps that we've driven over this week, and the manholes have just risen up. Why is that? Um, it's probably the most spectacular thing that we, we can see. But essentially what's happening there is if you can imagine these liquefiable layers uh, are essentially liquid when the earthquake's occurring. Now inside those big sewers there's quite a lot of air and so they become buoyant. So it's kind of like they're floating up and at the same time the land around them is wanting to settle down. And so what happens is this, the sewer pipes at the base and you've got a little manhole and it goes pop up through the top and you can see it um, staged there. That looks really cool and it's a bit of a, of a driving hazard but the biggest issue is because that, that pipe or that big sewer has now been moved it's not flowing the way that we would like it to so it's not, okay, yeah. you're not getting that gravitational flow. So that's why we had so many sewage problems in Christchurch. Mm. Alright, so the other big issue that we have to deal with is lateral spreading. What happens here where we have very slight slopes with liquefiable ground underneath them is that we have this process called lateral spreading occur. So the liquefiable layers, they start to liquefy and it becomes a, a really lubricated sort of sliding surface for that top crust to move on. And so what you have, where you have a river channel such as here, is that that top slab, which is nice and dense, quite, quite coherent as a block, wants to move down and it wants to slide under gravity on the liquefiable material down into these topographic lows. 
And so what ends up happening is that close to source it breaks up and you get lots of sort of cracks and fissures, but even all the way out, potentially 500 metres away from the river, you've got this spreading occurring. And that's what's done most of the damage to buried services, so sewers, electricity lines, water cables around Christchurch. It's also been really damaging for a lot of houses, and that's where you'll see those crazy angles and all that sort of thing in Christchurch. Mm, so, the process of liquefaction not too good for infrastructure. So we're now going to have a look at what we can do about these sort of problems for the future. <laughs>